Hello friends, this is a update video to the last video I made about caffeine. I'm going to talk about caffeine and depression. In the last video, I said that I was going to keep taking in a little bit of caffeine. And the very next day, I decided that I was going to take it out completely. And I did. So that was Friday. Today is Wednesday or Thursday a.m. And so this is about five days. No chocolate, no coffee, no caffeine from any source so caffeine is also in kombucha I think it's in chai it's it's in yeah chocolate there's five different stimulants in chocolate so I've got to look at a lot of things to 100% eliminate it so everything that I've taken in for the last five days has been zero caffeine. And also zero stimulants. So any kind of over-the-counters, any of that kind of stuff that has stimulants in it, I haven't taken any of that. I usually do. So right off, that first 24 hours, without having it, I had numbness, and I still do. I have numbness in my body. I had numbness in the left side of my head going down to my left knee. And I was actually having some kind of weird situation with my walking. A, I've been taking in caffeine for some time, daily. So my sleep was hasn't been excellent. I've my nervous system has been more apparent. So it got me so I started thinking about that and I realized that it's possible and this is what I'm considering is that the nervous system is overextended whenever you're using stimulants. So I consider there possible wear to the nervous system. So if you've ever seen surgery videos of removing tumors from heads and such, and you've seen that nerve going along the brain, it's, it's basically a fiber just going along your head, going back to your spine, it comes up, goes to your optical nerves. So think about all the little tiny nerves inside of your, your eyes and in your tongue and in your fingertips and in your fingers and your toes and in your skin. Very small nerves going to the big, huge nerves going into your spine. So I was thinking, okay, well, if we're depressed when we are hurt, which is self-evident, if you've ever hurt yourself and you're real tired afterwards, your emotions are low. Body's going to put you into, into a check mode where you're just, just going into rest mode where you're tired and you want to sleep and you're not hungry. This happens when we're sick. This happens when we're... have. Sometimes people that have a terminal situation will sometimes take their lives. And sometimes when there's poor health or whatever, people will feel real awful. They won't feel real good. So the point I'm getting at is the consideration that I'm having is the possibility of the, an atrophy or 
a long-term damage from stimulants. And this, you, if you look up videos about methamphetamine addiction and people that are on the streets and they're using methamphetamine daily for years and years and years, take a good look at the, the shrinking of their bodies. Take a good look at the shrinking of their necks. And also, too, there's the, depri- there's the, the falling apart, the wrinkling of the skin, the, the exhaustion look. We'll also consider the nerve stem and the spine and think of the atrophy and how that's going to actually complicate certain organs to an eventual heart attack or something that happens with the brain possibly. I'm thinking the further away from your brain going down into your body, your sexual organs, impotence or issues with your liver or kidneys or pancreas however I was getting to thinking about how it's possible that if there's atrophy and then the actual the hindering or the possible you know the decaying of certain portions of our nervous system then that could possibly be a massive thing for a large portion of later in life issues other than things that people were born with such as well, you, you know what I'm saying So I noticed the days after taking it out, I noticed that depression was coming on very badly. And this is what I have avoided is when it's coming on, I'll take in the caffeine and then I'll get that oomph and I'll come out of that slump. Well, I'm, I, there's a, a price to pay. And so everything else has been somewhat healthy on my body except for this. And the nervous system is not really something that is on the outside that, that we can notice, such as our skin or our eye color or how, how's our, our gums pink or how's our teeth doing, things like that. What I do know is that when the, ner- when the nervous system is damaged, it takes a very long time for the nervous system to recuperate. And if anyone that has actual severe nerve damage, it can take years for some nervous feeling to come back. It doesn't recuperate as fast as the liver or your skin or a cut. It's not the same. So this is a trick on the mind where the body is going into a I'm saying that I'm considering that this is the possibility that the mind is going into depression mode to bring you down so those nerves can recover. It's a, and why is there the thoughts of taking your life? Why is there all that? Well, that's, that's more and that's beyond the possibilities of the reasons for self-elimination in a physical sense physical sin. So I have a question, and I have a question for everyone that watches this. Okay, do you have depression? Did depression develop and mood swings develop and worsen as you aged? Do you do you take in caffeine? Do you take in any kind of stimulant? Cocaine, caffeine, methamphetamine, any of it. And I won't bring in cigarettes because it's cigarettes, the effect of cigarettes is not the same. It does affect your nervous system. It's not the same, though, as these stimulants. Obviously, cigarettes are possibly, if you're, if you're, nicotine is definitely going to have an effect on your nervous system as well. 
I'm just going to go ahead and just say these super, super stimulants. Do you use them? How long have you used them for? And is it similar to myself using caffeine ever since I was my earliest memories, little, little boy? Are you any different? Has it been the same for you? Because I, I want to know. And you don't have to say anything in the comments. It's, this is a conversation that you can have with yourself. Because I notice the more and more I, I speak about things that people don't want to hear, the more flat, the, mm, how do I put it? I get resentment. Because no one wants their reality to be messed with. They, they, you know, what we're fed is what they go with. What, if it's not doing you well, then what about the simplest things right there in front of our faces that we're not noticing? And after I realized this, I said to myself, man, of all the things that I've realized, and I didn't ever realize that, it's kind of a, a trick loop system if you're going to go into that slump. For myself, it's I'm going to need to take in some caffeine so that way I can not be depressed. So the nervous system or people that are producing large quantities of caffeine and putting it in these things and not putting any kind of label on there saying that this is what caffeine does to you and basically keeping that all hidden. It's possible that this addiction to this caffeine is way beyond addictions to other things because it's not a... It's not under the spotlight like the other drugs are. The other drugs are, they're bad, they're no-nos for you. This is more of a slow poison. More of a, more of a poison that takes years and years to chisel away at us. And it's got us in some kind of grip. It's, got, it's had me in a grip. So I'm speaking for myself. And I'm not saying that I that any of this stuff is for sure. If you think about wear and tear on something that you overuse, then that's just sense and ability to realize, just apply it to other things in life. You've got it, you've got to, if, anytime you overextend anything in life, you've got to pay the price for it. And it seems we're not really doing that any other way than just going into these slumps and going into this depression. Well, why is this only for us, though? Why isn't this for everyone? Well, this is genetic, then. It's a genetic nervous system situation. Your ability to recuperate, possibly. It might have something to do with the immune system and the nervous system. It could have something to do with your... Some people have a higher threshold to things in life in certain ways. You know, some people can smoke cigars until they're 100. Some people, some people can drink excessively where other people would die of it many years before. You know, some people can make it into their 60s or 70s drinking heavily, and some people will die at 50, 40 sometimes from drinking the same amount. They just, their, their bodies... They don't hack it the same way, to keep it simple. So how, how can we apply this and understand, you know, what, what am I going to do? Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's a, a grip hold to get away from this. And I'm, I'm thinking of when I stopped smoking cigarettes when I was 23 or whatever. So uh, almost 20 years ago, I stopped smoking cigarettes. And it took me about a week. And then, and I wanted one real bad. 
and my girlfriend was smoking them still, and I remember that sucked real bad. I wanted one real bad. Still, I, I didn't do it. I didn't have one, and then I got over it. And then when I got over it, I. Then it it was the, the cravings were gone. And sometimes, I I will crave some nicotine, and there's other ways of getting some nicotine. Sometimes, a little bit of, loose chew or whatever sometimes this is just if i want it sometimes much different than smoking cigarettes daily over and over and over again so i was thinking about this and the 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 grip that this caffeine has over me and it's I'm, it's this last five days has been comparable to those cigarette that cigarette week of taking them out. So I have lowered my caffeine for months, and I had it real low for a couple of weeks, and then I went to it. So keep that in mind. I didn't go from drinking tons and tons of coffee to just nothing. No way. I slowly brought myself down. I didn't do that with the cigarettes. So caffeine is a real powerful thing. There's no doubt about it. It's a it's a real powerful substance that doesn't rock you the same way as smoking crack or something along those lines, which I've never done, or some, you know, doing doing something that's going to really jolt you hard, real fast. Caffeine's not really that. Caffeine, as I said, is just a slow slowly ripping you apart. It's been slowly beating the shit out of me, taking things from my health and my brain and my mind and my whole body. I have a stomach issue where I get cramps all the time. I, If I am close to being right, I'd say that has to do with my nerves and I'm cramping in my intestines or I'm cramping somewhere down there. And it's a real issue. And it has been for about 10 years so when I was about when I was about 33 I started having those issues so about nine years ago I started having those issues and it came on and it was when I was using a lot of stimulants to lose a lot of fat for bodybuilding I was using ephedrine and I was using I was using a whole slew of things that I could get my hands on. And I got a real good taste of a real fast, hard shock to the body. I got a taste of all of that. And then one day, I just didn't feel good. I went and laid down, and then it happened. And I could, my, my side felt cold, and I felt the sweat on my stomach and the sweat felt cold so i don't know what's up with that still it was an on that day it was just started and it hit me hard so there's a lot of things that you can do that can mess up your nervous system you know if you take dht blockers or any of that kind of stuff that's going to mess up your central nervous system and it will actually and I've read this that it will actually shrink your spinal cord if you uh, for long term continual usage of finasteride or dutastride or something like that so the body has a lot of things that it needs to do and there's things that get in the way of the body doing what it needs to do and I think that if there's one thing that you touch upon that people are going to be extremely defensive over, it's going to be their caffeine intake, which goes to show how strong of a hold that has on us. And yeah, I do drink alcohol, and it does have an effect on my nervous system. And hops has, a, has an effect on your nervous system. So one thing at a time, for sure. I definitely want to get the caffeine out. I don't drink hard alcohol, I have. Lately, for many months, I haven't had any whiskey. I haven't had any hard alcohol. And I 
definitely take days where I have no alcohol, no beer, no not, nothing at all. Because I know I need, I need my body to be able to keep up. I need to take care of my body. It's not... I never, not for a long time, have the fridge filled with beer. It's just, that's just not how I roll. I, I've got to do things to take care of my body. So the same thing with the, with the caffeine situation. I'm recognizing that this thing is deteriorating my, my body. So I want to know what is it doing to my brain. What's it doing to my brain? Because if my brain is going to have that response that something's the matter. And I've got to, and the, the, the nervous system has to be fixed, then that's going to take a long time. That's not something that's going to be one or two weeks. This is going to take months for my body to get over this. I don't know how much, I don't know how many, and I'll keep you updated. I'm going to have to go through depression and I'm going to have to go through some crap to get there. And when I get there, my body's healed up to a certain point. I don't know how much of it is permanent from 40 plus years of non, basically non-stop using caffeine. Either way, I'm still going to go towards what I got to do to eliminate the thing that's destroying my nervous system. Yeah, all the things about, oh, warning here, this is awful for you, this is awful for you, and something that's so deteriorating and can destroy you in so much of a way that I'm pointing out is not a concern at all. There's no, there's no concern publicly. There's no concern with your your media letting you know that, oh, this is awful. They're going to ban this. They're going to ban your caffeine. No, it's just a, it's just, it's as common as getting your McDonald's hamburger. It's just as common as that. It's just as common as eating the French fries. You just get your Coca-Cola. You just get your coffee because it gets you going in the morning or marketing. I, I saw a million Folgers commercials when I was a kid million it's it's a drug it's a drug so you can decide for yourself what how you want it what you want to do with this i'm relaying the information out of the kindness of my heart and it's really up to you whenever you want to or if you ever want to if you watch your body deteriorate if you say yeah whatever and then years go by and you're watching your body deteriorate and you're watching things go into crap and you're doing all these other things right and your body's still going to crap maybe remember what i'm saying here remember also too that when you're watching any videos and you're watching people drink coffee watch how they start to light up and things start to, their speech starts going a little faster. They, sometimes some erratic type behavior or, you know, I, was, I was watching a video just a couple days ago or yesterday where there's a, someone with mood swings, a young gal, and she was clearly very upset about something. And she was sitting there shaking her, her iced coffee and she was looking at how there was no more left and she's, very she's flipping out basically you know coffee is the biggie or tea or energy drinks monsters and chocolate so these are the big ones that people take in and i'm probably missing one think about the halloween kids going around they bring their pillowcase home or they bring their little buckets home full of candy and they sit down and start chomping and everything. Half of that is all chocolate. Bang, 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 bang. Well, that's not caffeine-free chocolate. That's, 
that's caffeine. So they're just loading up on caffeine. And then they go to the fridge and they get their their sodas and whatever else. I notice I was just over at someone's place and they had sugar-free sodas to stay away from the sugar. It still had the caffeine in it, though. And I don't even know if they make it anymore. They used to have Coke that was... And it, and that's still garbage anyways because it has chemicals in it. They had caffeine-free... I think they had caffeine, caffeine-free Coke. And I think they might have had... I don't know if they ever had a caffeine-free, sugar-free <laughs> Coke. I don't know what the hell you're going to do with that. It's bad. It's real bad. All the this, All this stuff that you can come in contact with... Just as a regular old normal average person, you could be anywhere and someone will offer you. You could be at a a gathering and someone will offer you. Yeah, do you want a, a Coke or do you want some coffee? Would you like some tea? Because it's a kindness. It's a kindness to offer. And so it's, it just goes on and on and on. People are just going to keep using this stuff. And then we're by ourselves and we're at the grocery store and we pick up a fresh bag of roasted coffee beans or we pick up a, a fresh thing of green tea. Well, this is an update. I truly, I truly do not know how my mind has been affected by this. I'll let you know. I'm the guinea pig. You just go ahead and check in for your own sake you know what happened to this guy i'm going through the depression i'm going through the apathy and all that well i'm going through it anyways it's just i could i could have times where i could oomph myself up well i'm not getting that right now so i've been watching other videos where people are talking about how they've taken it out and one fellow was saying he's it's been a month and i still feel like crap yeah well that's the nervous system. It takes a long time for it to heal. It's not a fast thing. It takes a while. I'm looking up nutrients that you can take in. I'm noticing that there are some amino acids. I have some of them. The phenylalanine. There's, there's some things that you can take that can give you a little bit of the ginkgo biloba. Basically, as I said, the brain, if I am correct, it's suppressing so that way it can heal, if you dig what I'm saying. It's the same as getting sick and, and you're bedridden where you need to lay down. Your body is putting you there. You don't have the, the drive in your mind, oh, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do that. Your body is shutting down. So if your mind is shutting down, it's also going to shut down your moods. It's going to shut down your sexuality. It's going to shut everything down. That's depression. So that's the formula. That's the, the possible equation that I'm talking about. And this could be for people that don't have mood swings. This could be people that have seasonal depression. This could be, people that, this could be for people that have mild depression every once in a while. And it sucks. Depression sucks any way there is. Any any way you go about it, it's a horrible thing. Unless you're a, a masochist or whatever. Oh, I love it. If that's you, I don't know about you, man. You, if if you're depressed, you're probably... How do you have any love or desire for anything if you're in depression, during depression? For people with mood swings, bipolar, they have ups, they have lows. Well, consider this. When you're having those ups, are you taking a lot of caffeine in during that time? Are you taking a lot of sugar in during that time? And then when you have your lows, what happens? Do you need to sleep more? Are you more exhausted? For people that have chronic, chronic, chronic depression, do you drink coffee? Do you take in Red Bulls? Do you take in tea? Do you take in a lot of Coca-Cola, Diet Cokes? It doesn't matter. Anything that has on the label on the back contains caffeine or anything in there that says has caffeine look on the back of the kombuchas look on the back of your any kind of drink that you're holding in your hand look at the label look at the very bottom it'll be very small it'll say contains caffeine 
even if you're taking a Nest Quick that says 99% caffeine free, you're still taking in the other stimulants that are in chocolate. Keep that in mind. This is a stimulant matter. This is very important. So you got to look at everything under the microscope to get to where you're not taking in stimulants because it's not just caffeine, it's stimulants. Because it will come to a point where you've got to pay the price for all these things that you've taken in so you can have that creativity, so you can have that amazingness, so you can do all these things and it's all going to come to a halt. And you're just going to, you're all you're doing is you're just destroying your body, you're destroying your central nervous system, you're destroying your spine. And everything, your feelings and your emotions and and I noticed that my moods actually started to come up a little bit to where I was more elevated in this last five days. I'm still going through depression and I'm still going through mood swings. And I didn't wake up very well today. And I'm not feeling very well today. Still, the way I felt yesterday was really strange because I haven't felt that el that smooth, I'll say, in a very long time. So I know I'm going somewhere good here. My brain is recovering. And I'm definitely going to keep you updated, whether I'm completely full of crap or if three months goes by and I'm still feeling mood swings and I'm still depressed. And what kind of goods came from it at least and if it's worth it at least or if I think that it's probably okay to just keep using it or whatever I'll say it it's okay to be wrong it's okay to be right <laughs> if I am it's the, the most important thing is is the information because then you can take that information and apply it towards something and and I know that there's some people out there that are going to be wanting to know this and they'll apply it to something they'll use it and there's a there's other people that will just scoff at it and throw it in the trash as fast as possible because they it's it's no mystery that humans will take the easy way out and the way i've been going with the caffeine is all i've been doing is just filling it back in a hole and then i gotta dig it back out filling it back up, filling it back up. And anything I ever got from it ever, how can I how can I really say to myself that I'm a bad boy when my parents gave it to me when I was a little kid. So, and my schools gave it to me when I was a little kid. And my and anywhere I ever went, families of friends gave it to me when I went over to their places. It's Halloween candies, candy at the store. It's so abundant that it's not a matter of you, it's something bad that you ever did. It's basically, it's just a matter of whether or not you want to go through a little bit of shittiness to possibly get to a point where your nervous system can heal. So keep that in mind that your nervous system takes a long time to heal. It's not something that heals fast. And keep in mind that stimulants does have an effect on your nervous system. So think about wear and tear. And also to think about how there's manipulation in the system. And how you can possibly get over this and myself and I'm and I'm going to say straight up very important that you remember that I slowly brought myself down to a very low amount and then went into it and then it was a really shitty thing so I if you are going to do something similar to what I'm doing that is a very most important thing is that you bring it down slowly and then take it out to where you're taking in about less than 100 milligrams for a couple of weeks 
then take it out. Let your body come down and and something you gotta something to point out is if you get down to that lower point, any caffeine that you take in, your body will adjust so that way you get more from that that caffeine. So your body is going to be playing tricks on you as you're bringing it down as well. So it's not really that you're going to be in a it's look up the the rate the down regulating and the up regulating of caffeine basically. This is a bodybuilder thing usually I'm, you can find it on forums or whatever people will be talking about it. If you bring it down, your body will upregulate so that way it's a higher effect in your body. So even smaller amounts will still be having a higher effect in your body. Your body is going to do weird things to you. It's not gonna it's not gonna say, Oh, okay, yeah, you you can do what you want to do. No, your body lets you know what's up. Your body's in control. That's that's the mind, that's the conscious mind. So that's day five, no caffeine. And it's not great because my body is recovering and I, my body is suppressing. And then how sad that is, if that's mainly why mostly everyone's depressed, how sad that is. So that's all I have to say here. If you have something you'd like to say, if you have something to add, please do. And I'll keep you, I'll keep you updated. So good night.